Good evening, everybody. And I would like to thank our NSK citizens and also Miran to, to these great, great presentations. And it's really amazing, I have to say, what we've just, uh, just seen the way this project actually grew, it's still growing. Uh, we are a bit tight without the time and there's so, so rich material. So I would like maybe Miran just to, to comment or to, to start talking because there is something that really fascinated me with this project. It is the way the NSK and also Irvin shift from the 80s to the 90s. The way it uh, react to the, to, the, to the changes that happen because it somehow and after the, particularly and in the beginning of the 90s in, in former Yugoslavia, you somehow lost this referential context that was one of the main inspiration and all this, I imagine that a lot of the, of, the, of the audience here is familiar with all this terminology that we were using from the over-identification, the hidden reverse and so on. So the, the in a way, the deconstruction of all the signs that were present not only in the former Yugoslavia, but like in the in the, this semi-ideology or the I ideology at the time, and then recontextualized or reconstruct in, a, in, a, in your different works, not only the Irvin, but also the other groups. And particularly, I think that Leibach, as you said, it's one of the uh, access point. So I would like you really to uh, comment this shift, this moment when you're actually losing, you are somehow bound to a certain context, and there's this moment when things become much more fluid, when things become in flux, and then actually you become yourself, NSK became a, a state, a state in time. Okay, shortly. Maybe I see on mine, yes. No, you can, you can talk. I, I can just talk, you yeah. hear me, okay. Okay, thank you for this question. I think it's very important. Uh, I would say that in the 80s, um, we were um, uh, using very much idea of, uh, how to say, over-identification. And also intervention sometimes. And just reality of Yugoslavia was shaping ourselves, was giving a shape to NSK. While in the 90s, we switched to the construction. I think that the construction is not a modernistic procedure. The modernistic procedure is uh, intervention. And also, I would say the over-identification uh, uh, is not working in, uh, in uh, how to say, in, in, in a system which are, uh, how to say, uh, uh, which are not monolithic. So in a monolithic system, the over-identification functions very well. Uh, basically, when Yugoslavia fall apart, we set like this. At the beginning, we were uh, like, um, a state artist of Yugoslavia, and we are saying we are state artists of socialistic Yugoslavia, and the state would say, no, you are not. No, you are absolutely not. Said, yes, we are, you know. So basically, we didn't use the strategy that we are kind of opposition or something. When the Yugoslavia uh, 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 fall apart, we decided to create our own state in which we'll be a state artist of our own state. Thank you. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you know, when you're reading about the, the, the whole um, activity of the, of the particular the 80s, it's always pointed that you were not a dissident artist, and this is also important to say. And Connor now mentioned this is not an activistic project. And I think what is interesting that are some strategies, this idea of the ambiguity, for example, that so some of you were, were, were mentioning, how to read now the whole NSK state in time, the Congress and what is going on. This idea also of the, and I think this is this is particular what strikes me the idea what did like a private like what an in, uh, a person like the individual can do without the the dominance of the of the institutional structure this is something that for example you did also in the east art map when you're mapping the eastern european uh, art scene and this is now with the nsk and for sure the like the expectations what like what happening how the things are progressing with nsk state and it's something that you didn't uh, expect accept at all i mean i at the one moment you also said we could uh, we could even uh, we could also not be present like so this this self organization it's really something very striking and i would like so, some of you uh, to, yes per, you, for example you you were really giving example how the the passports were used and i also appreciate very much this this connection with the occupy movement also today so how how we can uh, how we can 
read or uh, the NSK because the Congress was absolutely uh, amazing and the old, the, uh, the old folk art which we haven't uh, had so much time to mention. So this moment of the self-organization, of the out-organization of the NSK citizens. From my point of view, um, and yes, I was uh, a delegate at the Congress. From my point of view, one of the key ideas in the Congress was to decentralize NSK. So NSK as organization was created in 84, and, and <clears throat> um, the state of NSK was created in 1992, and the Congress in 2000, 2010 was uh, at least... I, I read that in, in the intention of the founding members of NSK that they wanted to decentralize the state. And what today I saw in the screen, on the screen, but not in my presentation, but in Connor's presentation, and that is to say the pounds by El Lusitsky, uh, were sort of a visual a visualization of that process. At least I read that that way. That is to say that um, in the period from 92 until um, 2010, there was one, let's say, beam or one form that was growing much faster than everything else. Of course, there was, that was to say, the, uh, the organization of NSK and uh, various projects of NSK state that they organized and so on. Uh, of course, there was an ever-growing citizenry of NSK too. But uh, from this moment on, I think that these other additional points, and there is no gravity point, that is to say, in those prounds, at least in those two-dimensional prounds that Connor showed um, today in, <clears throat> in his presentation, that uh, from 2010, I imagine that that, that, that build, building process will be decentralized and yet connected somehow to sort of the initial route, but eventually over the years, if, if NSK state survives um, the vagaries of time, um, the founding the, the founding uh, the, the founding segment of NSK state will be a little bit more marginalized than this now now it's still very much central yes because it's what is quite at stake now like uh, it's really the, the 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 discussion about the impact of the artistic practices on the reality how art is efficient in the social sphere like for example the next the, this year berlin bayania it's more or less this is one of the make subject to go beyond an exhibition beyond institutions and this i think is one of the of the great example or maybe a unique example when actually but it's also a, a result of a very engaged and long process and the way uh, of thinking and uh, as i had a feeling and i think all all of us that free of three of you are very engaged and following so much i would like to ask you for example honor how did you start uh, with being a delegate of the nsk state how has your interest started I was also at the Congress, but I wasn't a delegate, I was a facilitator. But, uh, yeah, I, I come from a contested zone. I come from the north of Ireland, which, you know, I, I have two passports, British passport and an Irish passport. So uh, I, I'm from a zone of contestation, and one of the slides that I showed was uh, by a friend of mine who's from Belfast, of uh, the, the 41 uh, euphemistically known peace walls that divide the city of Belfast, which you never really get a lot of media coverage. But, so I'm, I'm from uh, a place where you, you, you grew up with a very highly attuned political antenna and, and where identity is, is shifting, where the relationship of, between art and politics uh, is very, very real and very present. So I suppose when I discovered the work of NSK, which was originally through my interest in Leibach, um, just for the, been in the music, post-punk, and then later on industrial music, I think, and it's probably like a lot of people who are maybe not from the region, uh, I find it... The concept of NSK as a collective, and, speci and specifically the NSK state, really uh, uh, w was highly attuned to a number of uh, ideas and thoughts that I was already uh, had, had grown up with, was already very highly uh, familiar with. But I also think, just to, to talk about the recent citizen uh, initiatives, uh, it's one thing to be a, a, pa a passive consumer of, of an art project, um, you know, to, to passively consume the work of the Slovenian collective and. Uh, and it's another to sort of uh, engage the, the potentials that, that exist within it, and that, that is the potentials for, you know, I, I, I did say it's not an activist project, but the potentials for action. And I think that's specifically important in, in today's climate in terms of 
uh, as an artist, what is the relationship between art and politics? What is the relationship in art and ideology? But also, uh, you know, with the cri economic crisis, globalization, neoliberalism, the social function of art has to come under the spectrum. And thankfully, the Occupy uh, movement has started to, to open this up as well. Yeah. But this terrain already, al already exists through the lens of, of NSK and through the NSK state. So I think there's a useful mechanism there to, to, to examine some of these questions. I'm not sure if that completely makes sense, but... Uh, yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah. you, you just mentioned Leibach, and actually I was all, I would also ask Miran uh, yesterday, these days, like, was Leibach a, a kind of a trigger for many of the, of the, of the, of the, of the citizens, for many who joined that? And I would like to ask you, Charles, what about the American context and the NSK? And the, and the, and the, and the, so you, you, you show some example, and it was, but I, I'm curious, like, we come from certain common background, like from the Soviet, ex Soviet Union, you said the Irish, so there is a certain, let's say, empathy, or there is a certain affinity, but what with this context here? Uh, it's, uh, I, it was very interesting uh, for me. I mean, like, uh, Connor, I also uh, first encountered NSK through Leibach. Um, and uh, when you first see something from Leibach, it's frankly terrifying. I, it's really, you know, you, you really wonder, am I about to look at something that will get me in real trouble? Um, and so that does have a certain attraction to it. Uh, then, of course, you have to dig deeper to find out, okay, what's really going on. And, and as I said, one of the things that I found most fascinating about it, and I don't know if this speaks to the American context or just mine, um, but was the fact that through this over-identification, it forced you to confront these things in yourself. It really holds up a mirror. And if you find yourself seeing this type of art or listening to this type of music and starting to understand like how utopian idealism can lead to insanity like this, uh, you find it in yourself. And then you really have to sort of question the sort of judgments that you've made along those lines. Thank you. I will open the open up for the questions from the um, public. Sarah is one, thank you. The first question, you already know what it is, so please answer it. How do we get a passport? <laughs> uh, I can answer, but uh, you can answer too. You know? <laughs> so um, basically, uh, you can um, apply for the passport. Uh, apply? Yes, of course, <laughs> yes. They have a pretty high acceptance rate. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you want to answer yourself, you know, then you can, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you have to apply for the passport, uh, and you pay uh, the fee of 24 euro on the bank, and you send an uh, application with two photographs on the address, which is uh, on the uh, application form, and then you get the passport by um, uh, airmail, first class airmail, to your home address, or wherever you want. We have no right to, re, uh, to reject anyone, but we do have right, uh, if we don't like somebody, for some reason, that we uh, kind of uh, print inside persona non grata. <laughs> Did it happen already? Not yet, but it's, uh, we have this uh, institution of... Can I, can I request that? <laughs> yes, of course, yes. If you request, we, you will get it, yes. But just to mention, tomorrow it's still possible to have the passport yes, here. Yes, tomorrow it's possible before. to have passports here, you know. Uh, MoMA was so generous uh, and uh, they uh, uh, cover 20 uh, passports a day, about, am I right? Yes. And uh, the number which goes over, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can fill the application and, uh, um, uh, and send it to us. Uh, um, pay on bank 24 euro and you will get a passport. That's it, you know, so. Can I mean, we can, do, we can, do, we can, uh, we are doing 20 a day, but the rest of them, they will be done in Ljubljana and send it to you. As it usually goes like this, you know, people are sending application, and basically these application forms are not, uh, I mean, it's not so easy to get them. It's, the other idea was not to, to get just like as much citizens as, as possible. But, you know, if you really would like to become a, a citizen uh, of the, you'll find a way. You, you will go up to the river and you will come to the source. I just want to mention that we will have passport applications available outside in classroom A after the after this program. There's a question there. Hi. Um, if nation states or states are demarcated by borders and um, NSK is a state in time, I was wondering how 
any of you might define Aniska's demarcation or its borders, if that's possible. Maybe some of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it is, um, these are temporal borders because it is um, a state in time. So um, an SK state in time comes into being through various projects, actions, well, sometimes thoughts and so on. So um, as I briefly mentioned in my presentation and Miran mentioned in his presentation as well, Moscow Embassy, which lasted for approximately one month, uh, was one such a manifestation of the state. So the state is in some ways is activated when it is used, well, abused, or, or um, it is given some kind of function. So these are temporal borders and, and well, they still happen, those temporal borders are still enacted in a certain physical space. Um, but um, well, speaking generally, I can imagine that it can be enacted simply by thoughts. Um, but, um, um, but so far, and, and, and the way that NSK state demarcates itself, it's through various actions, initiatives, citizens' initiatives, which sprang up all around the world, especially after the Congress of 2010 in, uh, in London, in Leipzig, in Lyon, in New York last year, too. And, and so it is... It, temporal demarcations which take their root from a certain physical location. I would just uh, maybe add this, that the uh, NSCA state appeared where a uh, uh, certain activity of citizens is, ta are ta is taking place. So basically, um, uh, we are, uh, the, the state, the state, uh, the NSCA state in time is uh, maybe uh, something uh, similar like uh, Tarkovsky Solaris. If you remember, if you uh, there was a situation when you think of something, things getting de materialized. And that's uh, basically very close to, to NSK, I mean, metaphorically. And English language is very um, conducive to that too, because it's, uh, as far as I know, it's only in English that you can call a state a political unit and a state as a state of mind. In other languages, that is not really quite possible. And, and so, in some ways, English language is very convenient for an SK state and speaking about it. <laughs> More questions? There will be also reception afterwards, so if we don't make it, I know we have to leave soon, so I, we can continue also talking later, but please. Um, I work for the Consulate General of Slovenia, and in 2006 and 2007, there were many, many times when I answered the phone, and on the other end, there would be an African gentleman saying, I heard anybody can get a Slovenian passport. <laughs> um, and during that time, there was actually, there was a notice printed on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website saying, the NSK state passport is not a Slovenian passport, <laughs> because they were getting so many inquiries. And I wonder if somebody could speak about or it has any thoughts about that confusion that happened between a state that exists out there in the fictional realm and the actual state of Slovenia? I can do it if you... As a Slovenian. Yes, because it's an issue of diplomatic relation between Slovenia and NSK. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to react here, yes. Well, you know, it's true, you know, there were many letters from Nigeria uh, because they uh, uh, didn't, you know, it's, it's basically they didn't do any difference between Slovenia and uh, Neue Slovenische Kunst or NSK. Like uh, people were mixing uh, uh, Nigeria and Niger, you know, <laughs> or something like this, yes? And, and what happened is that we, uh, we, were, uh, we saw this on the internet. Uh, that it was written that Slovenia uh, is a republic, a country, and NSK is a kind of cultural project. But uh, in, the answer, in this answer, I was missing something else, that by Hobbes, uh, also the state is a cultural project. <laughs> so we, are, we were not a, a less cultural project than Slovenia. And basically, what we did with this document, we immediately switched to the artwork, uh, artwork you know, because uh, the state took us seriously, which was the best. You know? so, and, um, we, of course, as I said, we really uh, inform as much as possible um, um, uh, to Nigerians uh, on all channels we have uh, that, to, that they has to, has this passport is not for travel. And I think that Slovenia also 
helped in, in some of these activities to, uh, to explain people that this is not an uh, officially recognized uh, document for travel. Thank you. We do. <laughs> There's one thing to add to this. I think in the 1980s, NSK took the uh, Yugoslav state more seriously than it took itself. And I think in the, with the situation with Nigerian passport holders, uh, prospective citizens took the NSK state more seriously than it took itself. You know, yes. Uh, it's, it's true is that we, by the, our passport, we kind of uh, unwillingly became uh, scammers, you know, somehow, for Nigerians, you know. And we were very much aware that this happened <laughs> Because this was a short circuit, because something happened that contemporary art meet uh, some other reality, and these people didn't know uh, anything about contemporary art. The mo of course, you know, many people in Nigeria who are contemporary art, they knew about it. But we kind of, uh, 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 we kind of touched this kind of world, which was completely, where was completely bare life of people. So, and we took responsibility, and we went there, and we stopped, uh, uh, all the, uh, we kind of stopped people applying for this because at the end, they understand that this is not a legal passport of the country, and uh, this uh, probably this NSK is not kind of a uh, kind of Andorra, you know. I mean, uh, in a, in a, which uh, appears somewhere in Slovenia after the break. What do they think, you know? They were thinking about some kind of Andorra, some kind of country in the Alps. Yeah, somebody Small claimed one, that yeah. we're yes, there. and uh, and uh, when people from Nigeria are living very well. I mean, this was crazy, you know. This was just absolutely. We have to break this image, you know, so. One, one of the things that we discussed at the Congress, one of the um, delegates in my group was uh, from Nigeria, who was a conceptual artist and was aware of the purpose of the NSK passport. Um, but he actually described for us the sort of networks of scam artists that had risen to sort of take advantage of, of desperation for people trying to get passports to leave the country. Uh, they would actually submit applications, which is why you receive them, get the passports, charge a little extra for having done this service, uh, and then provide them to people who were then later, um, uh, let's say, disappointed to find out at the airport that they were not able to use them for actual conduct. So I, I think that actually what you did was a very creative solution. Um, uh, a much less creative solution would have been just to stop issuing passports. Yes, we had a big discussion on this because there was some microstate who did like this. I, and I think it was a wrong decision because people uh, have a right to ask for the passport, but they just have to know what this is all about. So basically, but it was very difficult to, uh, to enter the story to explain to people. We had to go to London, we had to go to Nigeria. We put many things, uh, many emails and so on, but at the end we succeeded at least uh, to the biggest amount of people that they are aware, probably, I hope, you know, that this is uh, not for travel. So we didn't uh, really get a case yet that somebody would stuck with this passport on the border, you know, so we were very much afraid of that, you know, so. And how, how is the, now there was the, the Congress in 2002 and you were mentioning other Congress and you Connor just said, I'm, I'm not a, I was not a delegate, I was a facilitator. So how, how is now organizing? Because we saw the first chart of the Neoslovenische Kunst with the, and how is the, how it's now the, the, the state or organized? What are the different functions? One, one of the things we were unable to arrive at at the Congress was any notion of organization. Um, I, <laughs> I think that the best thing that came out of the Congress, and um, a lot of people have alluded to it in the book and here, um, was that we all did get to communicate and meet each other, and now we continue to communicate. Um, and so at this point, it's, I guess you could call it a grassroots movement. Um, there are people in various locations all over the planet where they are holding citizen rendezvous, where they are creating new uh, instances of the NSK state wherever they are. Um, so there's no top-down organization uh, at all, or even any centralizing force at this point. And I think key to that is the, uh, the you know, this idea that of uh, reappropriation that in any given context. Uh, and I think there has to be a distinction made between uh, you know, people who are fans of the work of, say, Leibach, who came in the, you know, or fans of NSK as a, as, a, as, a, as a conceptual art project. I think there has to be a distinction made between that and, and the, the, the the materiality of the uh, of NSK, as, as, a, as I said earlier, as a tool that can be applied to examine any specific situation. Um, so, I mean, there are NSK folk art does reappropriate NSK generated motifs, but I think the, some of the more interesting and uh, uh, works to come out of the uh, out of uh, citizen generated folk art are, are works that reappropriate any given um, social, political, national, ideological motifs in any any given context. I think that's where it becomes much more interesting because then it functions as a way to really put them under the lens or really put under the, the, the materiality of 
what it means to be in the United States or what it means to be Irish. Uh, so I think that, you know, and this is becoming, like I said earlier, and the, the climate right now of, of transition and instability, I think this is, uh, this is, this is useful. More. There is another question. There are two, actually. Uh, the sociologist Saskia Sassen has looked at states and um, as bundles of territory, authority, and rights. And it seems that you're very clear about territory. Um, I'm not sure if the conceptualization of NSK extends to authority or rights as much, although it seems that rights are beginning to be addressed more uh, clearly with the Lagos debate, which has a, a definite poignance to it. Um, are those issues coming up in the in like the the Berlin discussion to 2010? Um, to reflect a little bit more on 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 the Berlin Congress um, in in 2010. Um, generally, we agreed to disagree in that Congress, and. Um, I'm going to oversimplify a little bit, and, and I ask everybody um, to, to, to correct me, but um, I sort of discerned three groups or three large wings uh, among the delegates. <clears throat> so one was, uh, let's say, an orthodox wing, um, the wing that almost wanted to create something like, almost like a tele theology of, 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 of NSK. Uh, then the wing of critical historians to which I uh, attribute myself to, sort of examining, critical examining of NSK state. And I guess the avant-garde wing that wanted to abandon all the all the accoutrements of NSK state and move forward into, into I don't know, uncertain or maybe very bright future and so on. So, um, uh, and, and so the question about rights within that state will be answered differently by by the representatives of these three groups, I imagine. And uh, I, I don't want to speculate any further um, about that, but I guess, what do we call them? The Orthodox would say that one has to submit his, his or her free will to the, to the, the, the altar of NSK or something like that. <laughs> so, Even consistent spirit. Yeah. Human, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Even an consistent spirit. Um, the 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 the, um, the avant-gardists um, would say that the only right is the right to claim the future, and the critical historians would say, <laughs> um, what the, the, the critical historians would say that they right would, has to be examined against against the history. But um, they would I report on the first two. I think is oh, <laughs> the, the, thank you. Yes, the reflection is best when it's seen, you know, like in the mirror from outside. <laughs> um, so I guess it is sort of non-answer answer, but um, because there was a definite split, um, maybe there were more than three groups uh, in in in, SC, in 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 the Berlin Congress. Uh, I cannot answer this question sort of unequivocally about the rights. And maybe just a comment on this. This was uh, pretty good if it just uh, uh, three groups about among thirty people. <laughs> uh, because in NSK of 12 members, there were 12 groups, you know, <laughs> because er everybody has his own reason why to join NSK. So that, you know, basically, it's, uh, uh, it, from the outside, it looks uh, very monolithic, but from the inside, I can talk this after so many years, you know, everybody has his own reason. Yeah, but it's also, it's, it's really an mm, uh, uh, extraordinary example that you're existing since 30 years, almost. Yes, it's, yes. it's uh, also uh, a little bit, uh, uh, also, how to be also surprised a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, another question. Actually, that was a specifically looking at that time period, um, it's interesting to think about where we were in terms of technology at that point, because it, I, I feel in some way like technology is just now catching up to the conceptual vision of the NSK where now people are really able to form, um, I mean, talking about specifically about social media, well, where you can actually form, you don't, they don't usually call it a state, but a, a group of shared interests internationally and have kinship in that. So I'm just... I, I think that it is true that um, the NSK Collective was way ahead of everyone else as far as virtual anything. Um, we, there has been an abundance. You made the reference to Second Life. 
uh, in your presentation, there has been an abundance of sort of uh, internet-based opportunities for people to collect, as you said, um, and to form just alternate uh, groups um, in this way. So yes, in the sense, I, I think that the NSK was, was uh, far ahead of um, the rest of the world in that sense. If I could add um, one detail, which I gleaned from Niran, as a matter of fact, that the NSK state as a state was first mentioned or first imagined actually at the so-called wetware convention in 1991, was that? Yes. And, and so the, the wetware, um, well, the convention about the, um, uh, the digital realities so or the, uh, the, the, the alternative, um, the electronic realities, I guess, at that time, because digital and analog were still very much present at that time. And uh, the wetware convention was taking place in Holland. Was it Amsterdam or some? In Melchweg. Melchweg. So, yeah. so, so it's very, um, I guess, very symbolic that uh, sort of the very first beginnings, uh, the, the, the seed of an NSK state took place, or it was first mentioned, first gleaned. Uh, upon in, 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 in the convention de de um, devoted to these um, alternative electronic realities. We have time for uh, one more question. No more questions? We can talk uh, while we drink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <nice> so maybe. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Sarah Kennedy and Pablo Hergara for inviting me to, to moderate this great panel and thank you very much. Please join us for the reception. <laughs>